Hey guys, I'm back. So, today we're going to be talking about ripping the paper. Bad focusing. Those. Okay, ignore the rip. So you might have seen this. This is an NPN bipolar transistor. It has three leads, emitter, base, and collector. Okay? So the, the way a transistor works is, say you got a signal, right? Say your signal is just some voltage through a resistor and an LED. Right? And say it's going right to ground. Okay, and you, you don't want to just connect this and have a, like a physical switch like this, you know, because you don't want to f manually do it. So you want your microcontroller to do it. Well, how can you do it? Well, you could use a relay, but, you know, relays are big, noisy, slow. So you can use something called a transistor. Little arrow. And there we go. Got a transistor. So now, how does this work? Transistors, these kind, at least NPN bipolar, which is the kind I'm going to be talking about today. I'm not going to be talking about any other kind aside from NPN bipolar. No FETs, no PNPs, nothing. So these are controlled by a current on the base. Meaning when you put a current on the base pin, it's essentially like a wire. And when there's nothing, it's like a broken wire, right? No connection. So the way you could do this is if you wanted it to just be perpetually on, set a resistor to positive, you get some current through there. Now you can calculate that resistor. Uh, I don't really know how, but, you know, just use like a 1K and you're usually good. So, you know, this can usually be 1K. If it's from a microcontroller, you can do 1K or 330. It doesn't matter. This can just be for your LED. So this will keep this LED perpetually on. And if you were to take this away and just straight to ground, there's no current, so it'd keep this LED perpetually off. So what you can do is if you have a microcontroller, right, so two microcontroller, then you could have your transistor, you know, your resistor to positive, LED to negative. Now you could say, you know, Oh, sorry, there's got to be a resistor. All right, so now you could say, well, I can switch an LED directly on my microcontroller pin. No problem. Right, and you probably can. I don't doubt you. I can, too. But the thing is that, say this LED is one of those 700 milliamp LEDs. Your, your microcontroller will never, ever provide 700 milliamps, maybe 20 milliamps max, right? Well, now you can use the full potential of your power supply and use your tiny, you know, little one milliamp microcontroller current right there to control your 700 milliamp LED current right there. Just make sure that this transistor can handle 700 milliamps and that your resistor can handle 700 milliamps in your power supply. But the transistor basically limits you to what your power supply can do instead of what your microcontroller could do. So say... You know, also, transistors are pretty fast acting, so you could use it on a motor. So now say you want to control something besides a super high power LED. Say you wanted to control a motor, right? Well, you, you have your resistor, you know, to a microcontroller. You have your transistor, just as before, right? Resistor to power supply. I don't know, maybe your motor doesn't need a resistor, maybe it does, I don't know, optional. Probably, you probably you don't need it then you can have your motor okay so you know what's the symbol for a motor I don't really know uh, motor now, I don't really know what the symbol for a motor is but now since motors have um, coils of wire anything that has a coil of wire you're gonna need to install a reverse diode behind it so this reverse diode, as you can see, no current's going to flow through it. Current can only fro flow from ground up, which that doesn't happen, so it won't. But what this happens is, if if you when you were to switch off your motor, right, those coils will generate a very like if this is your motor running, 
you switch it off, it'll bang like that. It'll go up really high to like, I don't know, 50 volts, if this is like 5 volts. You know, it'll do that. So this diode, what it does is when it goes bang, it bleeds through the diode to ground instead of damaging your transistor. Okay? You really need that, otherwise you'll you'll blow something up in your power supply or your transistor, your microcontroller. Okay, so this is 1K. And um, so that's how you would use it with a motor, right? You know, you just put the positive voltage here, your motor goes on, you put the negative, you put the ground here, your motor goes off. You can use P, uh, PWM, so you could do PWM coming in to control the speed of your motor like that. Very, very handy, these things. They can control, you know, they can dim anything through PWM from a microcontroller. And every microcontroller now has PWM, so you're good, you know. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else you could control with this, some more complicated things. You can really, you can control a relay through a transistor, which is what uh, SparkFun does in all their circuits. That's what I would recommend. Um, yeah, that's that's really all I can think of. I mean, you can control anything through re relay. You want, you know, my uh, iPod charger. I mean, uh, th sorry, through a transistor. You know, you want the iPod charger, this, but you only want to have the iPods charging at a certain amount of time. You can have a microcontroller hooked up through a transistor to the power supply or to the um, to the data pins, which let it charge. And then you could switch on the data pins only when it was certain brightness outside, when you tapped... You know, when you hit it with your fingers, when you snapped, loud enough noise, um, you remote controlled it with your remote control, you know, anything that your microcontroller can sense, you can then suddenly turn on your transistor and charge your iPod. Um, endless possibilities with this. You could selectively charge a capacitor if you had, you know, this. And you have your power supply and your cap and ground you can selectively charge that capacitor. Now you might want to add a resistor for the capacitor, like a you know, 2 ohm or something like that, just to limit its charge rate so it doesn't blow up your power supply. But you could selectively charge a capacitor, so you know you could put this to your microcontroller. You could charge the capacitor only when you wanted to, then break the circuit, and this essentially is nothing, just a break in the circuit. And you could have this going over here um, to, you know, through another transistor. also to your microcontroller, and then it could be going to, say, a, um, an LED, or motor, or whatever you have it. So in this case right here, what you could do is you were, um, you, you basically built, you can selectively, you know, charge a capacitor and later leave that same power to charge turn on an LED or charge your iPod or something like that. You could use this with one of those MSP430 launch pads, super low power to selectively charge a capacitor from like a solar panel, you know, one of these huge monster monster bad capaci bad boy capacitors. Um, you know, from a solar panel, you know, so this could be instead to solar. And then, you know, it could bleed I'm sorry, that's my cat. And then it could bleed, and then, you know, you could turn it off, and then it wouldn't light up this LED and turn it on. It would, or it would light up something, or do something, anything you can really think of. You could even switch on and off video signals. If you have a signal coming in, audio, video, I mean, transistors don't have super fast response times, and, um, yeah, you, you're going to have to play around with this, so it might not work, but to audio, and then out. You can use your microcontroller to turn on your audio and whatnot. I mean, obviously, the transistor is not going to be perfect, but it would work. You just got to make sure that the audio input ground coming in is the same as the audio output ground. But, I mean, that's transistors. Look at all the uses. And, really simple to use. You just put one to your microcontroller through a 1K resistor or a 330 ohm resistor. Then you put that to the base of the transistor. The collector you put to through resistor to positive, and then through the emitter you can put your device you want to control the negative. So it could be an LED and a resistor, motor. Just make sure to include that that diode. Anything you want. So thanks for watching and learning about transistors. Bye.